Hey Roshni, what are you listening to? Well, I'm listening to top 10 songs of the week by Spotify. Ever wondered how Spotify or YouTube Music curate top 10 songs of the week? Well, if you don't, we will be exploring that today together on how to predict the popularity of songs. Hi everyone, this is Roshni Tayal, an educator and a lead data scientist at Yum, which, which franchises KFC, Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. Let's get started on how to implement an end-to-end machine learning project to predict the popularity of songs. Before we get started, please check out Scalers Masterclass by Industry Leading Experts on Scalers event page. Link is in the description. So guys, let's get started. Before starting on this project, on implementing this project, there is a certain project workflow that we follow. First is getting the data, then cleaning, preparing and manipulating the data. After that, we train the model. And when you create a model, you test it. And then you make certain improvements on it if you're not satisfied with the uh, performance of the model. Okay, so this is the workflow that we will be following it today as well. But before implementing this project, before following this workflow, we will be installing the environment. Why environment installation is essential? Because whatever dependencies, whatever libraries you install, you require for a certain project, it will be at one place. So, library uh, environment setup is essential. So, let's see how to create an environment. So, I've already searched here Conda create environment on Google. And as soon as you go to it, you will see this command. Conda create minus minus name my env so you need to mention the required name here so let's create an environment right now okay so what i will do is conda create i will give the name as song popularity demo and what i want to do is i want to go ahead with python version 3.7 okay so i will just write that So it is working, it will install the environment, okay? So there are certain libraries that it will install automatically, okay? So uh, you can see, right, these libraries will get installed automatically, right? Now it is telling you, to in order to act activate an environment, you need to give this command. So I will just copy paste this command to activate. Now you see my environment name has changed from base to the name that I created. Okay, so now I'm inside that particular environment that we created. Okay, so now um, let's open the Jupyter Notebook and create the code that we want. Okay. It will give me a problem here. Okay. It didn't because Jupyter Notebook was already there. But if it gives you a problem, let's say Jupyter is not installed, then what you need to do is you need to just write the uh, command pip install Jupyter and Jupyter Notebook will get installed. And then you can just directly write Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter no Notebook will get opened. Okay. Since I was inside a particular uh, folder, it got opened into this folder itself. Now let's work on the code. Okay, so now I'm inside the notebook that we are going to fill. So for getting the data, now we want the data to import, right? And to get the data, we require certain libraries. So first library that I require is pandas. Why pandas? Because it will help me in reading the CSV file, which I have. Okay, so uh, talking about the data first, we have this song popularity data set from Kaggle. Okay, and let me give you a brief introduction about this data set. So we have 15 columns in this data set. And you see here that uh, this is the CSV file that has been provided, songdata.csv, which I have already installed in my local. You can install it as soon as you see this link will be provided to you in the description box. Okay. So there are certain uh, columns in it. Like you see, song name is there. Song popularity is there. Song duration is there. 
ਇਕਾਸਟਿਕਨੈਸ ਡਾਂਸੇਬਿਲਟੀ ਐਨਰਜੀ ਇਨਸਟਰੂਮੈਂਟਲਨੈਸ ਕੀ ਲਾਈਵਨੈਸ ਲਾਊਡਨੈਸ ਓਕੇ ਬਟ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਸਟੇਟਮੈਂਟ ਇਜ਼ ਟੂ ਪ੍ਰੀਡਿਕਟ ਦੀ ਪੋਪੂਲੈਰਿਟੀ ਆਫ ਅ Song ਰਾਈਟ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਰਿਗਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਥੈਟ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਇੰਪਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਸੋ ਵਾਟ ਵੁੱਡ ਬੀ ਆਰ ਟਾਰਗੇਟ ਵੇਰੀਏਬਲ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਡੈਫੀਨਿਟਲੀ ਆਰ ਟਾਰਗੇਟ ਵੇਰੀਏਬਲ ਇਜ਼ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਬੀ Song popularity right which is given in the data set right so if i just revise a little bit of basics here regression is a form of supervised learning problem right and that is why we already have the labels here we already have the song popularity uh, numbers here we are going to learn these numbers through the other features that are there and predict the same popularity on our test data right so that's the focus okay so um as i told you that we already have the data installed in my local you can install it and import the data here in order to import the data i need pandas library so i will quickly take it okay so i'm importing the pandas library it is taking some time yeah it got imported now read the data okay so for reading the data what i will do is pd dot read csv function okay let's get the path of the data so uh, my data set is inside this song data dot csv is it's inside this folder right so what i will do is i will just go back and go to this folder um let me just copy the path from here um just a minute yeah let me just copy the path and put the same path i'm already inside kaggle project so what i will do is i will take this and of course the data that i want to read okay it is saying uh, path not found on oh, just Okay so after importing the library we need to read the data right and in order to read the data uh, you need to give the location so what i'm doing is i'm just uh, going to the path where the data is installed uh, and taking the exact path for the file okay and pasting it here so this should give me the data yeah you see this gave me the data right now we have already gone through the columns that are there in uh, the data set song name is there popularity the duration of the song in milliseconds and the other features are there right so we can see it from here as well that there are 18835 rows in this data set with 15 columns or you can do it with this as well df dot shape will give you these many rows and columns and you can explore the data with this info function as well right so you see this info function is very helpful for us how it is giving you multiple things here it is listing down the columns that are there in this data set also the number of non null values in that particular column 
right? So 18,835 non-null values are there. And we can evidently see here that there are no null values in the data set because this is the shape of the data set and we have all non-null values here. And the type of each and every column can be seen from here, right? So here is the basic thing that you can do with the data frame that you have imported. Also, there is a describe method that helps you get the statistics of the um, of the columns generally, right? So you can see the columns which were non-categorical. Their statistics can be seen here, right? Okay. So, yes. Now, um, this is one way to ensure the number of non-null values. The other way to ensure how many uh, non-null values are there is this. You can just do df.isNull.sum. So these are the basic data exploration steps that we followed. Now, let's explore the features and manipulate the data. Okay, so let's go to the data manipulation step. Cool. So in order to manipulate the data, for the data manipulation, what I would suggest is first of all, let's drop this song name column because it is not uh, contributing much to our purpose, right? So these are the uh, several values that we have. So we want to drop this song name column first of all. So let's drop this. So there are two ways to drop a column. First, you can use dot drop method. Or what you can do is you can select other columns that you have leaving the first column. So what I mean is you have these many columns, right? You can see these many columns in your data frame, right? So what you can do is you can just select all the other columns that you want, paste it here and run it. You see song name column has been dropped, right? The other method to drop a column is using drop method. Okay. So you can um, just give the name of the column that you want to drop and the axis. You see, again, the column has been dropped, right? So Yeah. Now, after dropping the column, what we will do is we will separate the X and Y variables. What do we mean by X and Y variables? First, let me store this data frame into a new variable. Okay. Now, my new data has 14 columns and the same number of instances that we had. Right. Now, um, I am talking about separating into X and Y variables. Why I'm doing so? Because now we will have in, in X, we will have the depend, independent variables that we have, we want to keep. And in Y, we want to keep the independent variable or the target variable for predicting the song popularity. Okay. So let's keep in X all the independent variables that we want to separate. Okay. So our new data frame name is new data. This is the variable that we have uh, created. Okay, and let me just try it and explain you what I'm doing here. Okay, you see, if I do x dot shape, you will see these many columns. Okay. So, as we know that song popularity is our dependent variable is our target variable we want to separate it so we can see I have kept it into y and this is we have used the i lock method and uh, all the rows we will be taking all the rows and the 0th column because it is in 0th position we want 0th column so this is 
now my y and this is x so starting from 1 from song duration we have the x all the independent variables all the other features that we want to store okay so um, after this let's do some of the data visualization stuff in order to um, know about the data okay so what i will do is Okay, now when we have talked about how to detect null values in a data, how to see how many null values are there in your data or no, let's move forward to manipulate the data, how to manipulate the data. Okay, so first what we will do is, these are the columns in our data, right? And I am wanting to drop the column song name. Why should we drop this column? So you see here, there are so many unique values in the data in this column right so there are 13,170 unique values in this column okay so we have a lot of values in this column and it is not much contributing to our value which is predicting the song popularity right so we will drop this column but how to drop a column there are two ways to drop a column either what you can do is you can select the other columns that you want to have, leaving the column that you want to drop and paste it here. It will give you the other set of columns. The other way is to drop, use the drop method, which is just write the column name that you're wanting to drop and give the axis. So what this axis equal to 1 does is why I'm mentioning this axis uh, hyperparameter here because this axis will tell you that how do you want to delete drop a column right so axis equal to 1 means it will drop a column uh, from the uh, from the horizontal axis right so it will drop the column totally okay but if you're wanting to drop a column from from the vertical axis you you need to uh, you, you do not need to mention any value here okay so i'm dropping a column and you see we are able to get the other variables with it okay so now uh, we see that we have uh, same number of rows and 14 columns let's move forward to split this data into the dependent variables and independent variables okay so what is independent variable that i'm talking about independent variables are all the other features that we want to keep for our for the modeling purpose and dependent variable is our target variable which we will be keeping in the uh, dependent variable set okay so what we will do here is i'm using the i lock method Okay, I'm defining X and Y and in X, what we will have is, okay, I will explain you how I'm writing this iLock method and why I'm using it. First, let me write it. Okay, so what iLock method does is, this is index location and there are two methods basically, lock and iLock. It, iLock is index location and lock is location based method which will in where you have to give the labels that is label based indexing and this is in integer based location okay so you just need to mention the integer numbers so this is all the rows you want all the rows and this is you want the column starting from index 1 right similarly in y since uh, the target variable is in first position is at index 0 I am taking this index 0 over here. Okay. So all the rows, but only the index 0. Okay. So this is how you will get the X and Y variables. You see, I'm running it and visualizing the shape of X. We see that we are able to get the value. Uh, one mistake I did over here is I dropped the popularity, uh, sorry, uh, the song name column. But I did not store this into a new variable name. 
and that is why i do not have that data frame with me this data frame has not been stored anywhere right so in order to do that what i will do is either you simply put it into a new variable or if you are not wanting to do it what you can do is you can add the parameter in place equal to true it will create the impact within the same variable which is df okay you see here i will show you now df dot shape if you will do you will have um fourteen columns it is showing here let me see how does this looks like yeah this has been dropped right fourteen columns yeah fifteen columns were there now we can see fourteen columns we see that it has been dropped right so I can now use df here because we have saved the change in the same data frame now x has been uh, now, if we do this, I should have 13 columns in X, which is visible. And Y also we have got, which is the first column that we wanted, which is song popularity. Okay. Now we have X and Y. Let me, let us also see that how the values in the variable X is distributed. So for that, what you can do is simply... Let me first import the Seaborn library. So Seaborn library, what it does is it helps you with basic visualizations. Matplotlib is also there. Plotly is also there. Seaborn is also there. But what I want is I want to have a distribution plot, right? And that is why I'm importing the library Seaborn here. So let me run this. And I will just... Uh, Copy the basic line of code. Yeah. Also, uh, I would need to import matplotlib to have a figure in the Jupyter Notebook. So I hope you guys know about uh, the matplotlib and Seaborn library. They are they are very basic libraries used for data visualization. And whenever you want to have a have an interactive display of plots in your Jupyter notebook, you need to have this matplotlib. So this is how we import this libraries, right? And you see um, how I'm using it. First, I'm using this matplotlib to specify the figure size. The uh, figure size is 8 comma 4. You can mention it. You can play with these numbers as, as many times as you want. Okay, I'm just leaving it constant because I've experimented with this number. Okay, now um, uh, what I'm doing is I'm using sns.displot. We have the df. We are analyzing this particular column, which is song popularity. Uh, there are other hyperparameters which I'm not going into much explanation over here. Bins will tell you the number of bins that you want in the uh, distribution plot that you're plotting. Line width will describe the width of the line and the color is there. So you can just uh, look for these basic hyperparameters when you look for the distribution plot over Google. You do not need to remember these lines. You just can, you can Google it over there and they have a very good documentation of each and every hyperparameter. Okay. So what if I would not have used matplotlib and just gone with sns.distplot? Let me show it to you over here. Yeah, you see. I'm getting this here, right? But what I'm wanting is I want to play with the size of this plot a little. So I will just put these here. I can increase the width, right? So it will increase the width accordingly and you can just visualize it, okay? If you want, you can also skip the, these lines and just use sns.displot. It will help you with the plot. So, yeah. Now, uh, with this plot, what we can see is that the song popularity method, song popularity variable is normally distributed. 
okay we can see the normal distribution of the curve which is very much expected so let's move forward with this now okay. so uh, now we have the plot let's move to feature selection okay we have already decided the number of features that we are keeping it as independent but do you think that 13 columns out of 13 columns all these columns will help you decide the best model do you really think that all these 13 columns are the best columns that you would like to keep for your modeling purpose right if you don't think so then what and how to select the best features right so we will talk about that in this feature selection section okay cool so there are few multiple ways that i will be talking about how to select the best feature but i will start with the uh first one which is correlation matrix okay using correlation matrix but before coming to correlation matrix there is one thing which you might have seen a lot which is Seaborn's pair plot method right what this pair plot does is it will plot the um, plot the graph between each pair of two variables like you will see soon it, it takes some time to run and give the results let's allow it to run okay now we have the output so we can see that uh, you, you will see this the size as very small you can also increase the size of it like I told you you can just use uh, these plt dot figure and set the size but this doesn't contributes much to understanding that how all the columns are dependent to each other and which columns we can exclude and which columns we can include for the feature engineering part right so skipping this part let's come to feature selection like i told you there are few multiple ways to select the best feature that is over there first is using correlation matrix then is using variance inflation factor vif which we call in short then we have select key based best method right this is provided by scikit-learn and it has its own uh, set of uh, advantages that it offers and then there are feature importance technique that will help you how you can um, i mean how each and every future gets weighed up okay so based on the uh, weight you can decide that which feature is really important so let's go through the first uh, method which is using correlation matrix in the correlation matrix what you will um, have is first we want to have I, I so starting with giving you a little bit of context on the correlation matrix so what correlation matrix helps us to understand is a basic dependence between the basic multicollinearity between two variables okay so let me show you the graph first and then you will be able to understand it better so starting with building a correlation matrix i will just write so we have x now right the data frame that we want is x all the independent variables are here and we have to filter the best features from this data frame which is x okay so this is correlation matrix that we have defined you can just use dot c o r r method which will help you get the correlation matrix okay now to, in order to get the correlation matrix what we can do is we can just use seaborn's heat map we can draw a heat map here and we can directly do this which we will write it as first let me take out the indices and this is simple you the matrix that you have created we store it here not index indices the correlation of it right 
I want the annotation so I will just set it true and you have certain color that you want let me just uh, take the color from here which I have already saved you can also take a simpler version of color you can just refer to the Seaborn library documentation you will get enough idea about it yeah you see I'm not happy with the size over here right so in order to increase uh, the size of it I have already told you what method we used the PLT library matplot library library right so I will take this line take this line play with the size okay PLT dot show I would need the need to increase the size so I am setting it something around let's say 12 comma 10 let's see if it works if it is clearly evident yeah it works right we can see the graph now you see this is the heat map that we are drawing right and if you want how to see that how a correlation matrix look like when we did this let me show it to you over here yeah you see this is in the form of data frame song duration ms song duration milliseconds you see the correlation is one because these are the same variables definitely you will get a full co multi collinearity uh, value right similarly you get some numbers between each and every pair of variables but to see that in form of a graph we use heat maps that is what we can see over here using seaborn library okay so in this um, heat map the greener ones shows that it is completely uh, it, it is um, there is positive correlation between the two variables and uh, when there is red extreme red then it is showing the negative correlation between the two variables right and you see the values that how it is distributed okay so now you have um, now we have the values right what we will we would like to do is we would like to list those column names which are highly correl correlated okay so let's see how we can do that let me explain you with the code okay so what i am doing over here is i'm taking the absolute value of all the uh, correlation values that we have got okay so how this will matter is let me just print each and every thing that we are doing this will help you understand better you see we were getting some minus values as well now we have removed that and we we have all the absolute values all the positive values with us okay now in this graph if you see you have two triangles the part above this green diagonal is the upper triangle and the part below this green triangle is the lower uh, triangle okay so what i'm doing is i am taking this only upper triangle to take the values of the variables which are dependent and we will filter the values accordingly because these values are repeated right these upper triangle and lower triangle are repeated okay so in order to do that in order to select the upper triangle I am using this part of the code okay what I'm doing here is I am applying a where condition in which I'm using this library which is np.triu if you will search about it over the Google you will get a complete documentation about it that what all parameters are there in it you see you get the manual of it yeah see it will help you select the upper triangle of this array right okay so this is what we are doing here in this um, upper triangle we are taking the correlation matrix um, a correlation matrix that we just took and uh, yes converting converting it to very well value you see if I print this upper, okay, I have not imported the NumPy library yet. 
let me import this yeah you see so we replaced the lower triangle values with the bull values right so whenever wherever we have the values uh, we want the values in the upper triangle we will get the values other part will get substituted with none you see we have got the upper triangle right now when we have the upper triangle we know that we want only those columns where the column value is greater than sorry uh, we do not want those columns where the column uh, where the correlation value is greater than 0.6 because we see that those are extremely negatively correlated uh, variables right so we want to filter them so we are applying this filter greater than 0.6 you can play with these numbers and you can accordingly um, exclude the features that are there right now if we just print this we see that these two columns were there which were highly cor negatively correlated and we do not want to keep these variables so you can straight away remove these variables from your consideration okay so this is one way to select the best features if you want and uh, also uh, here you can play with the values let's say i can take the value as minus 0.4 i can take the value as 0.4 since i've taken the absolute value and i can substitute it over here right i'm getting the same set of variables in case if you have more than 100 features and 100 variables if you're dealing with big data you will have more amount of variables filtered out in this step right so let's move to the other method to filter the features to select the best features the other feature that we want to talk about is the variance inflation factor what this feature uh, what variance inflation factor does is it will help you know that how much variance that how much uh, variance of the estimated coefficients is going to affect the other part of uh, the variable right so it i mean because of multicollinearity in the model so after uh, using correlation method technique the next method that i want to talk about is the vif method which is variance inflation factor so what this variance inflation factor does is it is an it helps us detect multicollinearity between the features it helps you know that how much uh, of the variance of the estimated regression coefficient is increased due to multicollinearity present in the model and one more thing if it is greater than if the vif value is greater than 5 or 10 you need to remove those variables because it tells that there is high uh, multicollinearity between those pair of variables okay so let's see how to implement this how to implement vif for seeing the uh, for selecting the best features okay so we have a particular uh, library for it let me just uh, copy the code from the notebook which i have already implemented and i have already uploaded in my github i will give you the link later on so yeah you can take this variance inflation factor module from this library which is stats models dot stats dot outliers influence if you do not have stats model um already installed in your uh, local how you can i've already told this how you can install this is you can simply do pip install stats models over here and you can run it the particular library will be installed to uh, i mean corresponding to uh, the virtual environment that you have created okay so since i it was already there for me i i did not needed to do this again okay so now i have the variance inflation inflation uh, factor already installed let's move to other steps i'm creating a data frame here okay i'm creating a empty data frame here okay and the value that i want is is the variance factor okay 
and in order to get this what i will do is i will use the variance inflation factor and um, take the values of this so what x dot values will do is it will get you the values of each and every column in the form of an array like you can see over here right so now we have x dot values i will just write i for i in the range of the number of columns that we have okay um i will take one over here because this will tell me the number of columns that we have i will written a list comprehension let me just have it here now let us see this library how this is working on yeah you see we have got the variance factor of each and every column that we had we can see 13 values and you remember we had the 13 columns with us if i say x dot shape you see we had 13 columns right and this is how you can just take the y axis value okay so now uh, we can see this but we cannot know that corresponding to which column is this value right corresponding to which particular uh, regression column we can see this variance factor right so in order to get that what i will do is i will just add on a new column feature and i will add here as x dot columns right and now if i print this vif data frame i can see this whole set of features and their corresponding variance factor okay now with this i can see that song duration millisecond is exceeding our threshold value which is 5 or 10 which we decided right you can simply discard this uh, column and there are other columns which is exceeding like energy is having variance factor of 30.7 right you can exclude this time signature is giving you a variance factor of 88 which you can exclude right so this is how you can select the best set of values you can just uh, take a threshold value of let's say uh, 11 or 10 and then you can select the variables which are below that which have um, the vif factor less than 10 and and select those features for your modeling purpose right so this was one of the method to select the best features we have another method provided by the scikit learn library okay and that is select k best method so what select k best method helps you to do is it helps you select the k most important features from your data okay when i say k most important features that means either you can select five most 10 most 15 most if you have 100 out of i mean if you have 100 columns available with you you can select 50 most important features if you want okay so this is depending on you that how many variables you want to select and it will give you the best set of features for your modeling purpose right so this is the one which is which i usually prefer for the modeling purpose when i um, create uh, when i am developing a model or so so this is the preferred method and the other one which i will be illustrating after this so in order to implement this select k base method you just need to use the scikit learn library okay so i am taking this uh, these two libraries over here you see this select k best best module was available in sklearn.feature selection um, library right and uh, i have just imported the select k base method now in order to use this what we will do is uh, we will just <coughs> First, what I will do is I will just implement the number of features that I want to keep. I am keeping six features. You can take five, you can take 10. Okay, you can just uh, tune these numbers and see that what is working out for you depending on the model performance. Since we have not built the model yet, 
we are just selecting the best features we are experimenting with it so i will just keep a random number over here okay so i've selected k equal to 6 let's create a new variable with the name x new and i'm using the select k best okay let me remove these yeah select k best method yeah okay in order to explain you better when you will just go to the scikit-learn documentation for select k best yeah select k best you will see that we use the score function as the first parameter right and then we mention uh, we mention the value of k which is int okay so score function is what we need over here right so what i will do is i will use this f regression method to get the best score So this f regression method is already uh, there in the scikit-learn library uh, if you will see it, it, it's already there and it helps you get the f score bit, uh, f score of the features basically so i'm using this f regression method i will direct, directly pass in the score function parameter and the k that we have defined okay let me print the head of it uh okay uh sorry uh the this is the x new that we have defined okay um this will be something like this k equal to k we have already defined and we will use this bit transform method and pass the x and y variables directly yeah okay so we have got an array next let's talk about select key best method what select key best method helps you do is it helps you select key number of features from your data okay the purpose is same to select best features but here we have the flexibility of selecting a number of features that we want to have so let's say if you have 100 features in your data or let's say let's take a very small data right uh, we have five columns in our data and we do not have sufficient space to delete the x number of columns which we do not want to compromise with a very smaller data since we have already small data right so in that case we can specify that yes i want to drop only one column tell me that which one column should i drop and select five best features right so in that case you can mention k equal to five and perform this operation okay so let's see that how to implement the select k best method how to use this so for that uh, i have important two libraries select key best from sklearn and f regression from sklearn okay um, so what why i have taken f regression over here uh, just to use the um, scope of using f score which is the regression uh, value with, uh, for for a feature okay so after importing these two let's create let, let's use this select k best method and in order to use the select k best what i will do is first what i'm doing is i am defining the number of features that i want okay i'm defining the number of features that i want to have okay i want to have six i can have 10 i can have 12 as well because i have 13 features in my hand but i am just experimenting with the number here i'm just taking a very random number here i could have taken anything now in order to use select k best method i 
what I will do is I will just use this library which I have imported the F score. So if you will go to the uh, page that how to use select key best method. Yeah, the first parameter is the score function and the next parameter is the value k that you have already decided the number of features that you want to keep. So in place of score, I'm using this f regression which we have calculated from the library itself provided by scikit-learn and the number of k, val uh, k values that we want and then fit transform on the x and y. Okay, now in order to select the feature the code I have already copy pasted from there. So yeah, now you see that um, I'm having this. Uh, I am um, I'm just from uh, I'm I mean I have already run the select key best feature and I'm just uh, filtering out the features that we have selected, right? So we have the set of selected features over here. So now in this line, what I'm doing is from the data frame X that we have in hand, the set of 13 features with the set of 13 features, I am selecting the best features that we have using the select key best. I have directly applied the select key best line that we have done on top, right? It's the same thing. Okay. So this is how you use the select key best method. And this is, I have applied it directly. So if I just break this line to make it simpler for you what we are doing is we are using select key based in the same way that we have done you use fit transform fit it will give you almost the same value on x and y okay so if we do this 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 is the method that we have run now we are selecting the key based features from the set of columns right okay i need to add this dot get support yeah. and you see i am getting the set of six features that we want i am getting the best six features it has this the scikit learn select key best method has selected six features that we should go ahead with modeling for modeling okay so now I have the columns, I can store this into a variable, which is already there. Okay, and uh, yes, I can just print this. So I, either I can just write the selected features like this, or I can do print and then selected features. The, but the best practice is to use the print statement. Okay, rather than just mentioning the variable name, best practice is to use print statement. Okay, so let's go ahead with this. Yeah, now we have selected the six best features that we want. So this is how select key best method works. And you can use it in the same way to select a <clears throat> n number of features that you want to have in your model. Okay, the fourth and the final technique that I want to talk about is getting the feature importance. Okay, so what expectation would be here is that corresponding to each and every column, we would be getting some weights. Okay, we would be getting some weights, some form of numbers that will help me decide that yes, this is the higher weight. So this is the really important um, variable that I should keep. This is the lower weight. So I will not keep this method. I will not keep this variable. Okay. So uh, for this, what we will do is we will use the scikit-learn extra trees regressor. I am using this regressor um, for doing this. Let me just copy paste this thingy over here and do model dot fit on X and Y. 
ओके नाउ दिस मॉडल डॉट फिट हैज डन नाउ वी कैन कंटिन्यू विथ नोइंग दी फीचर इम्पॉर्टेंस राइट आई हैव रन दी एक्स्ट्रा ट्रीज रिक्रेसर दैट वी वॉन्टेड वी कैन डायरेक्टली रन फीचर इम्पॉर्टेंसेस एंड दिस इज हाउ वी विल जस्ट यूज द प्रिंट स्टेटमेंट टू प्रिंट दी फीचर इम्पॉर्टेंस दैट दैट वी विल गेट ओके ना यू सी it is perform it has performed as per our expectation it has assigned certain numbers to each and every column that we had okay so here you see uh, certain features have 0.093 values certain feature have 0.03 value 0.07 and some also have 0.01 definitely we can see we can judge from here that the values having 0.01 and the features having 0.09 are comparatively on the higher and the lower um important side right so i am interested to pick those features where we have 0.093 and 0.092 and 0.088 let's take a threshold of 0.80 and we can select those features okay so um uh, what you can do is uh, you can just print x dot columns here and you can just uh, judge that yes song duration millisecond has 0.081 so i can take this acousticness has 0.092 so i can take this column into consideration and uh, audio valence has 0.096 which can also be taken so accordingly you can just filter out the columns and take it okay but now just to go for the modeling purpose and go ahead with the best features since we are moving to the modeling section uh let's select some of the best features from here itself on the basis of um feature importance itself so what i'm doing is i am selecting the uh let me copy the best features that we have already selected once okay so these are the features that i'm selecting on the basis of feature importance you will notice that all these features have the value greater than 0.80 okay so yeah now i will just run this and do this x dot shape you see i have selected nine best features for the analysis okay now let's move to the very important section which is the modeling section where we will talk about how to develop a model towards our goal which is how to predict the song popularity okay so now we have the feature sets we have explored the data we have visualized the data the point is to create a good model okay so towards that step let's start with um the first step the very common step which is train test split okay so um what i will do is i will import the train test split so you will know it very easily that how do you get train test split it is available in sklearn dot model selection module and this is how you get train test split module and to use it i think it's a very common step that we do and you might have observed we are doing this y train and y test okay splitting it into four parts training and testing for each x and y variables here i will run train test split and we will run this on x and y okay y was this and we will keep the test size as since we have enough number of uh, instances over here which is close to 18835 um i will have the test size here as 30% 0.3 okay now let's run this we have got x train x test and you can calculate the 30% of this number that we have the total instances that we have to select the best feature okay this is capital x dot shape you will see that it has been divided accordingly
Okay. So similarly, you can test for X test, Y train, Y test. Let's move to to the um to selecting the best model that I algorithm that I want to have to create the model. So for implementing the algorithm, um, I am selecting the random forest algorithm over here to have an end-to-end -end implementation. You can select decision tree. You can select other regression algorithms if you want. Let's go ahead with regression. Uh, sorry, random forest regressor over here. So first, what I will do is I will import the library. random forest regressor since it's a regression problem that we are working on that is why we will be using random forest regressor okay so um i will just define the model here which is random forest regressor in this variable so we have the random forest regressor okay now we all know or even if you do not know, you can go to the random forest regressor um, documentation. You will see a number of hyperparameters which you need to give value to, to to create a model, right? So there are many hyperparameters and there can be many different values to each and every hyperparameters, right? So here comes the scenario for hyperparameter tuning, okay? In order to select the best hyperparameters, we have two methods, grid search CV, cross-validation technique, and the other technique is randomized search cross-validation technique. Okay, you can either use grid search or you can use randomized search. I am over here going ahead with randomized search cross-validation technique because uh, it is a little bit faster than grid search cross-validation is what I have observed as per my personal experience, but you can go ahead with grid search CV if, if you're comfortable with it. So uh, in order to use randomized search CV first, we need to import that as well. So, okay, it is under model selection and um, we just need to have this. Okay, SLP capital. So we have got randomized search cross validation here. Now, in order to perform this cross validation, randomized search cross search cross validation uh, technique, we need to define certain range of values for each and every hyperparameters. Okay, so what I will do is I will take it from here. And explain it to you. So these are the hyperparameters that we are considering and um, will assign a range of values to. So first is n estimators, which helps you get the number of trees in the random forest. Okay. So this is how we define a range of value to it. I have just uh, taken np dot line space and started it from hundred. Okay, and stopped it till thousand. You can play with these numbers as in uh, what you need, okay. And max features, I am iterating with auto and square root. So number of features you need to consider at every split. This is what I'm taking it as. Either you select it as auto or square root. Max depth, you can again play with numbers. I have just assigned it from five to 30, between five to 30. Minimum sample split. So minimum number of samples, which is required to split a node. It can alter between these numbers, 2, 5, 10, 15, 100, any, any one you can pick. Then minimum sample sleeve, you can take any of these numbers as in you want to experiment. Okay. So yes, I've taken some random numbers over here. You can change these numbers as your, as you have the data. Okay. Now, um, what we need to do is we have this. Uh, we can create a hyperparameter grid over here. So you see, I have already created it. Let me explain it to you over here. So we have created a small direct, um, 
small dictionary over here which i'm calling it as hyperparameter grid and here we have um, assigned these values that we have taken to each and every hyperparameter that is defined under random forest regressor okay so we have these five features with us now you see we have these features assigned now i will directly use this hyperparameter grid to give to select the randomized search cv this is how i will do okay so first comes the estimator that you need to define and i can directly give the estimator as rf model which we have defined already over here random forest regressor is the estimator for us okay so random forest regression we are performing here and uh, parameter distribution we can directly give this hyperparameter grid that we have made okay and of course the scoring function the scoring function that we have you can take any of the scoring function that you want to you can take uh, rmsc msc whatever but over here i have taken negative mean squared error let's go ahead with it okay uh, next is number of iterations that you want to provide let's go ahead with two iterations you can go, uh, go ahead with 50 iterations 10 iterations whatever you want to tweak it as let's go ahead with five iterations just to reduce the complexity cross validation let's give the value as five the other variables you can take it as or you can skip i'm just taking it as random state some value some ran random number just to make sure that our values are not changing on each run okay so we have defined the ran randomized search cv and let's run this okay we can see an error over here i guess it's okay i have written param distribution it's param distributions yeah so we have defined the model which is randomized search cv what next we can do is we can just fit the model to our x and y data sorry not x and y we have taken x train and y train right now x and y will not come into picture anymore so yeah since we have fitted for five uh, i mean the the cross validation value is five and uh, we have also taken the number of iterations as five right so it's fitting five folds for each of the five candidates so it will take some time to run let's wait for it to run okay while waiting let me explain you uh, the further part of it when this model gets trained right and it select the best best hyperparameters and it uh, gives you the best model on on the basis of best hyperparameter ranges that we have provided we can after this model is trained we can see the best parameters value through this method which is best params okay so model dot, dot best params will give you the best values that randomized search cv has picked up in the range of values that you provided okay so this is there and after this run successfully we can also see the predictions which can be easily seen with dot predict uh, dot predict method okay dot predict and this we will definitely predict on x test okay so this is predictions right we will just store the predictions once this model is trained we are using this for predictions over here on next test data and we can see the predictions over here as well let me use the print statement to print this predictions okay 
I'm just waiting for model to run. Yeah, so our model has run now. Now you see it has completely run and we have got the output. So in order to know that which best parameters it took, we have already discussed this method. Yeah, it took the N estimators as 836, minimum sample split as 2, minimum sample leaf as 1, and max features as auto and max depth as 30. Okay, so we have these features. Now uh, let's talk about the predictions. Yeah, we see that some of the predictions we have already got, right? And it aligns very much, very much with uh, what we wanted. So let's see that how much these uh, predictions are deviated uh, normally. I mean, how much, how can we visualize this? So uh, what I'm doing is I'm using the Seaborn's dist distribution uh, plot again over here, and what I will do is we have the Y test, right? Which stores our actual uh, predictions, the the actual numbers minus the predictions which we have done. Okay, so this is what this is the actual predictions, the actual values that we have, and this is the predictions done by the model, right? So I'm just subtracting these two and trying to plot the difference between the two. Okay how much deviated we are. I'm trying to see that on a plot. Okay, so when I do that, let me just uh, increase the size of it. Although we can see that. Okay, um, I am maybe using the wrong method. I can just take it from the above part. Yeah, it's fixed size. So what you might be noticing here, guys, is nobody remembers the exact syntax of the uh, methods they want to use, exact um, syntax of uh, the libraries or, or let's say, the functions that we want to use, right? You can easily Google it or you can have it at one place and you can refer it when you want to use it. And nobody expects you to remember as well. Okay, so this is the exact. And you see, uh, let's increase this more. 12 comma 10. Yeah, okay. So this is the plot that we can see. And it's quite normally distributed, as we can see it already. So uh, there is not much deviation that we can see. So our um, the, the predictions are not, are again, normally distributed. Okay, so we can uh, visualize this in terms of scatter plot as well. We can use scatter plot here. You can just use scatter and the same thing, y test minus predictions. It will give you, okay, so this is there in PLT, not in the matplotlib, not in the Seaborn. Okay, so yeah, this this will not be there. So it's, it's x and y, yeah. Again, you can increase the size of it if you want. But over here, we can see that it's not very linear. Uh, it's it's not a very linear graph that we wanted to have. So definitely, it, it requires more of uh, the improvement in the model, more of the hyperparameter tuning, maybe more good numbers that we had assigned, right? Or you can also experiment with different uh, algorithm if you want here. Instead of random forest, you can use XGBoost for a better performance. You can try decision tree, but that definitely not will succeed, uh, outperform uh, random forest that we have used over here. Uh, let's also see the matrix that how much they give here. Okay, so if we talk about the matrix, um, I am visualizing the MA mean absolute error. 
and I'm just taking the actual value and the predictions that we have. Similarly for MSE and RMSE, root mean square, mean squared error. Okay, so let's print these. These all are available in the scikit-learn library. You can just uh, import the uh, matrix module from it. Okay, so yeah, we have small y. So I'm just making that change in this code that I copied. Okay, so we can see that there is a high MSE value over here. MAE value is also high, right? So it, it needs some hyperparameter tuning, more, more good model to make. And we can also use the other algorithm and compare both the um, model performance and then select the best model that we have, right? So you can perform n number of things on it. We just wanted to implement a basic end-to-end -end, um, machine learning algorithm that how we start with data exploration, how we import the data, how we explore the data using the info method, the describe method that we just saw, right? How you can <clears throat> how you can visualize the data using few of the basic uh, algorithms, a uh, few of the basic uh, methods that we just used, right? In uh, the feature selection method, we saw four techniques on how to select the K best features, select the N number of features, right? You can use any of those things, uh, reduce the number of columns that you want for the modeling purpose. Uh, you can also experiment with different set of uh, columns that you have for modeling that, that can increase uh, the performance of the model as well, right? And then we talked about modeling that how do we take a model and then perform the fit method, select its best hyperparameters and then take out the result, okay? Take out the predictions and then we take out the results, okay? So this is how a machine learning algorithm, a machine learning project is implemented. This was a basic regression project that we did. We can have more classification and more uh, uh, projects on unsupervised learning as well. So for now, if you uh, also, if you want to push your project in GitHub, I would say we, uh, I have this link, which will attach in the description box as well. So uh, in this link, it tells you that how you can, when you have the code with the data, if you want to push it to your GitHub, right? How you can um, turn that folder into a Git repository and push it into the repository where you want to keep it, right? Where you want other people to see as well, right? So I have already pushed the code in my GitHub. Let me just show it to you instantly. So yeah, it's there in this song popularity regression demo. You can just um, open it and see the same uh, what what I have demonstrated to you. I have done over here for the demonstration purpose. So you can uh, refer to this code as well. And uh, yes, so let me know if you have questions. We can talk about it. So when you're done with the code and when you have implemented it completely, now it's your turn to share your code with other people so that they can collaboratively see your code uh, and um, take advantage of it, right? So I have a link which we will attach in the description box. So in this link, what you will find is a very started step to how to set up your folder and push the code to GitHub repository. So just follow these uh, steps that are there. Anyone can push the code to the GitHub repository and you can share it. So similarly, I have pushed my code as well to GitHub repository, to this repository, uh, the name of which is Song Popularity Regression Demo. Um, you can refer to, my, uh, refer to the GitHub link for the similar notebook if you want or you can push your code uh, by watching the whole video and uh, push it to your GitHub as well. So this was an end-to-end -end implementation of Song Popularity Prediction Project. If you have any questions, please put that in the comment section. Hope you find this video informative. If yes, please like the video, share and subscribe to Scalers YouTube channel for more such content.